Uh, Kawan Gabriel had a real Round tough one. cut uh, to 65 kilograms. But that was the day before yesterday. He competed yesterday. I think the wake up may have been a factor in his, you know, his performance. He had a really tough decision win that could have gone either way. But uh, I see him stood opposite Dominic Mejia, and I've got to say he looks, looks a, lot a lot bigger now. He does. Put a lot of weight back on in those last 48 hours. And Mejia comes out and pulls guard right away, trying to get on a leg. Nice, Dom. Your game. Interesting inversion, inversion there from Kawan Gabriel. Didn't expect him to go leg game this early on against somebody like Dominic Mejia. Interesting. I can hear in the corner of the Asai Republic you see a Kennedy Maciel who's going to be competing oh, in the next match. Him in into this yet. Cross Ashi and he's got both legs under control. Oh, he might he might look for this Z lock here. Hard to see what he's very got. Careful. Yeah, I think Kawan might have got out of danger. Not completely out, that straight ankle lock is still a thing. Can't quite see the configuration of the leg entanglement on the other side. Sometimes a little bit difficult when they're both wearing black to see exactly which limb is where. Yeah, it looks like the knee line has slipped. Yeah, but Rob Deagle, as we said yesterday, you know, such a great leg lock specialist. He'll make sure that they go back in exactly the same position. One of the best restarts I've seen yesterday. You know, he was right on top of that. Very difficult, contentious restart, and he handled it perfectly. So we're back in the center now. And yeah, I, I, I feel that Kawan's leg was out of danger, and there, now he comes up on top. Mejia scoop grip under the ankle. Looking for this outside leg control. Something trapped in the shorts. Yeah. There we go. 30 seconds to point, yeah, you can hear Kennedy's Switching very vocal in the false corner. Reap. This was a nice switch here by Dominic. Dealt with it well, good call on. Oh, he's going to try this Shashinsky style straight ankle. It's a powerful lock. He's putting a lot of pressure on that foot. He's got a pretty good stretch on that. Yeah, this is not a bad attack here. Let's it go. Now, I think we may see Dominic come to top because Kennedy has been calling it again and again. Don't come up yet. Don't come up yet. He's been saying exactly when the points are active. Now they are active. We're going to see a, a, a change in momentum here, shift in momentum now. Well, we're going to have to see him free his legs from the gripping strategy that Gabriel is employing. Mejia inverts to follow. Another inversion here, and here's Dominic again on this straight ankle attack. Oh, knee bar. The knee bar. That was pretty close oh, there. Oh, inside heel. Knee line is out. Nice play by Gabriel. So coming up to attack the back. Exposes the back briefly. Mejia using the leg entanglement to counter. And he's got the leg trapped up again, 50-50. Cowan actually ended back into the legs. I thought he was going to disengage, but no, he's looking for an inside heel hook of his own here from this 50-50. And how to look at an Aoki lock for just a split second did Cal Gabriel. I'm impressed by Cowan Gabriel. And oh, there it is, another look at the inside heel hook, but that 50-50 is over the top of it. Oh man, this would be a huge win. It would. Mejia got a grimacing look on his face, saves himself, turns back in. Yeah, he's trying to escape from this position. He's trying to separate those legs. Now he does. He manages to clear the knee line. But are you surprised by Kawan's strategy and, and you know, just staying there right in the pocket trading leg locks? Um, no, not really. I, I think he's got a lot of confidence and for good reason. He's an incredible player. You know, this is by no means a throwaway match for Dominic Mejia. He's got his hands full. I mean, anybody coming out of that Melky Galval camp is, with this kind of praise especially, is going to be phenomenal. I mean, Gabriel, he's here for a reason. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no Melky accident Galvao, Mo brought him out. No, 100%. If Melky Galval has flown halfway across the world from Sao Paulo, Brazil, all the way to Almaty, Kazakhstan, and put this kid on Team Rodolfo, 
he's definitely he's definitely of a level to go up against anybody in the world and we're definitely seeing that right now dominic setting up a false reap attempt nice inversion baron bolo to counter attack it mejia again throwing himself onto a leg and this is a nice entanglement mejia now trading off to this z-lock position wants to get control of that second leg there it is and again He's got this belly down ankle lock. Aoki lock counter though by Gabriel. He's got a nice bite on it. Oh, it's the end of the oh, match. Wow. That's the end of the round. And Dominic doesn't look phased. Kawa Gabriel looks wow, kind of threw the hands up for a second there. He's like, all right, this must be pretty good. Ladies and gentlemen, after first round. Zero, zero round. draw. And a true draw. A true draw. A yeah. true draw. Neither guy really taking the advantage on the other one. You'd Mejia say, probably had the stronger positioning in the legs. He was able to actually get into clean positions a few times. So if I'm sitting on the sideline as one of the judges, I'm probably going to throw that to Mejia. But having said that, every entanglement, every offensive attack that Dominic threw towards Gabriel, Gabriel followed with great movement, great counters, got into a good attack of his own a couple of times, had a nice look on an Aoki. That was a pretty decent knee bar attempt. Threatened the back take here. Gabriel, there's that straight ankle lock, trying to switch it off to the Aoki. That was a strong footlock attempt. It was, yeah. I, I mean, gotta say, that, that round really was a true draw for me. I don't think anybody had a clear advantage. Yeah, as I, as I watched through the replays, you know, I was feeling that maybe Mejia had the advantage, but watching through the replays, I don't, I don't know that I feel that way. It's a toss up. All right, Sister God does Kawan Gabriel. We're going to see Mejia drop back for legs again, or... Wow, I don't think he has much of a choice, because Cowan's got to put him down in search of a leg lock. Oh, and he's got a good attack going. In that straight ankle again. Mejia having to counter very strong as Aoki is in. Yeah, the heel is out. That is a that is an Aoki, which is a devastating footlock for those who don't know. If you've ever been on the receiving end of one of those, oh man, they're nasty. But, nice work by Mahia, but he counters, bringing in a leg of his own. And see how he throws that leg into position. He's very good at this attack, at setting it up. And man, Gabriel though, just doing such a great job of staying calm in that bad position. That's probably the third time he's escaped that attack, but Mejia finding his way to it with relative ease a couple of times. Yeah, he showed good composure, not panicking in those exchanges and responding well and in the technically appropriate way. Oh, Aoki. Aoki his own, man, they're just going back and forward, these leg locks, huh? Dominic, he's slowing down, he's slowing down. Let's go, Dominic. Let's go, Dominic. Not sure how I feel about the double mercy grips in this position, though. We know what to do, Dominic. We know what to do, Dominic. We know what to do, Dominic. Let's go. We know what to do, Dominic. Let's go, Dominic. We hear Kennedy saying again and again, we know what to do. I would like to know what that is. I'd like to know what the strategy is here, because, I mean, if it's get a leg lock, I'm not sure that's going to happen. Not based on what we've seen so far. Of course he could if he keeps working for it, but do you think that's the game here? I think the game is to use the leg entanglements to come up and score sweeps or wrestle ups perhaps. I like this grip that Dominic's playing right here. Using his head against the toes, the lever of the foot. Let's go, Keep attacking. Curious kind of entanglement right here. No clear advantages. You got Calvin Gabriel kind of like a Dalihiva shot all the way across the far hip. Gabriel, yeah, he, Kwan is just doing such a fine job attacking Dom. He's, he's not just like dealing with, but he's countering and attacking the leg lock entanglements of Mejia. Oh, here's a grip on the inside heel. Gabriel has a pretty good grip going here in the 50-50. Okay, has the bell on it. Let's stand, Dominic. Let's stand. Smart. Focus there. Attention. 
I'll be honest, I am not a fan of this position. I know the 50-50 guard gets a bad rap, in my opinion, with good reason, because like this right here, it's very difficult to untangle yourself without exposing yourself to danger. Look at this, Dominic Dar threatening the Dars choke against the 50-50. Ridiculous. You know what's the difference, though? Like, 50-50 really got its bad reputation from the gi matches where the heel hooks were illegal and where the advantages, you know, guys were just playing for advantages. In there's no real, th th you don't have that bazooka no. in the gi. But then in matches like this, the heel hook isn't just like a, a, an instant checkmate, you know? It, it doesn't deal with the position that well because when both the guys are very good and also well aware of the heel hook, they will make sure that they're not giving anything up. So in effect, it forces them to stay locked. Yeah, but it's like watching a heavyweight boxing match in a lot of ways. Like, are they, is there a ton of activity? Not always, but the bazooka could come at any moment and somebody could go to sleep. And that's kind of the way I feel about 50-50 and no gi. Like, is it the most exciting position? No, but sometimes it ends very, very violently, and we like to see that. We do indeed like violent <laughs> submissions here at Aiga Champions League. That is very, very true. Well, time will run out in this second five-minute round. And again, just Another draw. dead, even, neck and neck, both of these guys. Oh, man. Second round. I hope the judges are paying draw. close attention because both of those rounds were 0-0 zero, zero, and with no clear advantage either way. Would you, would you say the same, or yeah. do you see one or the other in the lead here? No, I really, I really don't see anybody in the lead. I feel like both guys have had, you know, every time that Dominic has made a strong entry, Kawan has countered it. Not, not just, not just dealt with it well, but attack it. You know, like with his inversions, trying to spin, spin under and go to the back. He's had a couple of pretty decent. Like this was a pretty decent look. You can see it on Dominic's face. Oh yeah. That's the giveaway, right? But this is, I mean, this is about as tightly contested as you can have a match, especially considering that there's been plenty of action. Like neither guy has even been close to a stalling penalty or even getting the stalling clock turned on. There's been no admonitions from the referee to increase the pace, and yet no one has gained an inch of advantage. Round three. Kind of ironic that uh, Rob Deagle, noted leg lock specialist, has uh, had to officiate the probably the most leg lock intense match of this entire weekend. Maybe this entire season. Yeah. Straight back into this sort of shootout right now. Literally seconds into the round and they're right back at it like there was no break. Dominic coming up. And he's going to get into his passing. Let's go, let's go. Turn it up, Dominic. <laughs> Push that foot down, he put knee slice. There you go. Push that foot down. Let's go, Dominic. Let's go, Dominic. Pressure. Let's go. Let's go. Turn it up, Dominic. Turn it up. Turn it up. I find it interesting to hear the uh, SA Republic corner saying, come on, Dominic, pressure, pressure, time to go. So definitely looks like a change in strategy now from uh, here that he's looking to pass rather than uh, hang out in the pocket with uh, with Kawan Gabriel like he has in the previous two rounds. Gabriel wants to get into his false reap here, it looks like. But Dominic now taking upper body control, trying to slice through the guard. Good job by Kawan. Watch your foot, the finger foot the entire time. The finger foot. Dominic, 30 seconds for points, okay? There you go. There you go. That's better work from Dominic Mejia now. Nice, Dominic, go. Pressure, pressure. Let's go, Dominic. Tries to cut the angle to develop the guard pass a little further and get shut out. So smart there from Kennedy Maciel saying to Dominic here, if you need to sit, sit now. Do so before the points come into play. 
That's exactly what he did. He went to a double guard pull. Good call by Robert Deagle, our referee. Going to get these guys back in the center. Yeah, he's been on top of it all weekend. Yeah, you know, usually you can have a lot of opportunities to criticize the referees at any event. Oh, they've all been great here any this sport. week. Yeah, but yeah. Robert has really, in particular, done a great job. And, and now he's working this restart again, making sure that both guys get exactly what they had before. Yeah. I think the whole uh, hats off to the whole referee and, and judges crew. I think they've done a fine job these last two days and very high stakes matches where the pressure is on. So. Tom yeah, threatens the rest a lot. That is interesting to know that Kawan very much sat back on his heels and, and not going forward there. It's Dominic's being the aggressive one now. Kawan Gabriel aggressively head positioning, but I, I feel if he doesn't start going forward, you may, you may see him get hit with a, uh, uh, a warning. And if that happens, that's got to give the advantage in the match to Dominic, even if no stalling eventually gets called. And now, Dominic getting into two underhooks with his butterflies, pushes away at the hip, switching oh. off now to the reap. And now both legs under control. Oh, that's nice work there from Dominic Mejia. Going for that lateral knee bar. Karen Gabriel seems to have dealt with it though. Oh, that's oh. nice work from Gabriel. Can he keep Kawan down is the question. Out on the back, reverse body lock. Oh, he's got one oh hook in. Oh my goodness. He's got one hook in. Minute 20 to go. Pressure is on now, can he score? Oh, the second hook comes in, but the first one comes out. Asai Republic need this win really, really badly. He's got a minute he's got the and two. change to work. He's got the two for the reversal. Oh, that is much needed points for Dominic Mejia. And if he keeps working, he could solidify that lead even more where he put the second hook in. Kennedy calling for him, submit in the corner, submit. He doesn't want him to stop. Uh, absolutely, I mean, a submission is also, uh, you know, such an important factor in this. Psychologically speaking, you know, a win is a win, but man, you want to win by finish if you can. Great up body control. Oh, yeah, he does almost switch off the rear naked there. One hook in, a little bit high is Mejia. Fifteen seconds to go. Dominic on the hunt. There's that second hook. Oh yeah, Kawan Gabriel doing such a good job of denying him that second hook. You can see real good grip. And Mejia is just going to hold on now, and time runs out, and with that 2-0 lead, it is now one match apiece for Team Adolfo in Asahi Republic after Dominic Mejia scores the win over Kawan Gabriel. In a hard-fought match. It was a hard-fought match. That was, that was close. It really came down to that third round, and Dominic this match lasted for over three rounds, according by points decision. One fighter from Blue Corner, Dominic Mejia. Yeah, I don't think domination is the right word, but I would say that he outworked, uh, outworked Cohen Gabriel in the latter half of the round and and was the only person to score a notable position in the entire match. So, yeah, he really had Kawan on his back foot pretty much that entire third round. And that's a big win for Asahi Republic. That's one that they had to have. You know, all of these, a lot of these matchups, when you look at them on paper, the Mika Golf All versus Igor match. If you're looking at that on paper, there's no way you pick Igor over Mika. That's a match that, you, you know, you never want to just throw them away, but you're, if you're making the betting lines, you're yeah. going Mika Golf Yeah, yeah. But these matchups, like Mejia versus Gabriel, that, you know, the kind of toss ups on paper. Asahi Republic has to take these yeah, matches they're the if they ones want to have they can't to lose. Absolutely, yes. yeah. And so that's a big play. Dominic Mejia coming up big for his team. Asahi Republic ties it up one and one. 
$50,000 on the line, HT. That's a lot of money. And I think just the sheer, the sheer feat of being called AEGA Champions League winners. And people want that. This replay shows here now this final kind of seconds. Look at the emotion in the Assay Republic corner. And with good reason, because after 10, 12 really tough minutes of uh, such razor thin action, I mean, getting to that position alone, wow, that's a big win. It's a big score. Now, a great performance from Dominic Mejia for Assay Republic. And a great performance by Kawan Gabriel as well. No shame in the way that that one played out.